Hey everyone, today's video is about Jaronism's video, Is Our Solar System Reality? He is definitely quote mining Red's rhetoric in this video. If you want to know more about that, I have linked Red's video in the description. Just in case there's any person out there who doesn't know about that. And just because it was so beautiful, I also put a link to the debate between Red and Jism on the non sequitur show down below. Let's start with Jism's video. I show you some parts of it. If you want to watch the whole video, go to Jaronism's channel. I was taught that the sun is 93 million miles away. How about you? What were you taught? My guess is the same. Were you taught how we know it? Well, possibly your answer would be trigonometry. A hero of ball earth believers everywhere states this is the way that we know. Not the hero of ball earthers, but I'm sure you have no better understanding of it than calling basic math like that. Then math must be able to tell us which is right. 93 million or 229 million? Yes, and it does. Hello everyone, it's Jaren from Jaronism, back with another video for you today. How true is the model of the solar system that we have? Hmm. Well, ask any astronomer or fanboy of NASA or liar like Deceive McRae, and you'll get told it is a 100% fact. It is as true as true can be. Well, I shall disprove this at once and show how a presupposition, dogmatic faith can make their religious beliefs seem true when they are anything but that. This stupid bullshit again. You need faith for that because you don't understand it. But guess what? There's a cure for that. Learn it. Take a fucking book and learn how to do it. It's not that hard. So, we've been told that the sun is 93 million miles away. How do we know this? Well, let's begin with some facts. What do we know about the sun? Well, it emits light. What else? Well. The rest is a lot like the idea of Santa delivering gifts to every child on Christmas Eve. Even little children think it sounds crazy, but because authority figures are the ones telling them the story, and they don't know any better, and, well, cookies are eaten in the morning, it becomes believable to most children. Yeah, right. We don't know anything about the sun, then it's a big, bright ball in the sky. That, by the way, was sarcasm, Jaren. And Santa? Really? Oh, what the fuck? The difference is we know the sun is real. Told that it's 93 million miles. And with that comes some eaten cookies in the morning. They have filled our knowledge gap with their own cleverly constructed explanations of what we see. And then all we can see is what looks like beautifully wrapped presents. And then we find some cookie crumbs as evidence of their fictional Santa Claus. One way they do this is with the idea of angular size. So, back to our facts. The sun emits light. Anything else that we know about the sun? Sure, we know its angular size or its apparent diameter. This is the apparent size or angular diameter of a sky item. How large something appears in our eye or telescope. The sun and moon both appear to be about 31 or 32 arc minutes or that's equal to one half degree. So I wanna point out something that I certainly wasn't taught in school and it's no wonder why. Scaling invariance. Feel free to look it up on Wikipedia and you'll see that in physics, mathematics, statistics, and economics, scale invariance is a feature of objects or laws that do not change if scales of length, energy, or other variables are multiplied by a common factor. As long as all of your inputs are scaled correctly, the entire body is indifferent. It doesn't vary. One of those things, the entire solar system model. Please take note of this one sentence here. As long as all of your inputs are scaled correctly, the entire body is indifferent. It doesn't vary. One of those things, the entire solar system model. I will come back to that in a minute. Period. Well, is that true? A man has 30 cars and he added 15 cars. He now has 45 cars. Is this true? Well, if there was such a man and he did add said cars to his 30 car collection, then the statement is true. Is it reality? Well, I'd have to first prove said man exists, as do his 30 cars, as do the 15 he added. That makes it reality. So is math reality? Well, only when all elements of the equation are proven true is math reality. The mass in this case predicts how the result in the real world will be. The next step is to take the mass to the real world and test if it works there too. As you have said, find a guy who sells cars, then calculate how many cars he would have after he got X amount cars added to the cars he already has. And guess what? It will work all the time. Mars can present the right result each and every time you test it. 
That's what makes it reality, not a thought experiment. So when math works every time we test it, we can for sure say that it is part of our reality. And if we can test it here on Earth and it works all the time, why shouldn't we use it to calculate things in our solar system like orbits or distances to the Sun and other planets? Where are the flat Earth calculations and predictions to anything we see? How do flat Earthers calculate the distance to the Sun? I wonder how they will make it without using math. Well, he now scales the solar system up and down. I will speed this shit up to a certain point. They have to prove all the elements of the math. Let me explain. So the angular size of the sun and moon is approximately 31 or 32 arc minutes, which equals 0.53 degrees. Now, that does work for a sun 93 million miles away and 864,337 miles wide. But it also works for a sun 229 million miles away and 2 million miles wide. Wait, what are you saying? The sun would look way bigger in the sky. No, it wouldn't. It would look the same as if it was 93 million or if it was 46,701,000 miles away and 432,000 miles wide. The distances and sizes can be scaled indifferently. Our observations from Earth would be identical. If the sun was 23,351,000 miles away and 216,000 miles wide, it would be the same as if it were 11,675,000 miles away and 108,000 miles wide, identical to the sun that's 6,053,900 miles distant and 56,000 miles in diameter, which is no different than a sun 3,026,900 miles away and 28,000 miles wide, which is just the same as a sun 1.5 million miles away and 14,000 miles wide. Okay, hold up. What about our orbit, our orbit around the sun? Well, sure. You know the distance, which is the radius of our orbit. 2 pi r gives us 9,504,780 miles as our yearly orbit. Divide that by 365 and that by 24, and you get 1,085 miles per hour as our new speed instead of 66,000 miles per hour. And our observations change none. And since you feel no spin or travel at all, well, then nothing changes at all. Man, math is so reality. Whether the sun is 756,730 miles away and 7,000 miles wide, or even, heaven forbid, 3,500 miles away and 32 miles in diameter, it makes no difference. You liar. What about eclipses? Well, as I said earlier, we can't just change the sun. We have to scale the moon, too. So yes, as long as you divide or multiply by the same number, you'll be fine. So yes, the moon is 0.53 degrees as well, which works out to being 233,400 miles away and 2,159 miles in diameter, as it is about 400 times as small and 400 times as close as the sun. But it would work the same if the sun was 100 times as big and 100 times as far, so that the moon was actually 58,376 miles away and 540 miles wide. Well, then an eclipse would happen because the sun is 100 times as far, so 6,053,900 miles away and 56,000 miles wide. Or the moon could be 14,594 miles away and 135 miles wide, or 864 miles away and 8 miles wide. Or even, heaven forbid, 3,567 miles away and 33 miles wide. It could be half that size, 1,729 miles away and 16 miles wide, and then the sun could be double at 3,567 miles and 32 miles wide. Same observation from Earth, of course, because math is reality. It can't work with a normal size Earth and the sun and moon close like this, because of the angular size you are babbling about. We know that the sun and moon never seem to change angular size through the day or night. But they would if the sun is only 3,500 miles away and the moon even closer. This debunks the whole bullshit about close and small sun and moon. And if you scale down the whole solar system, you would also have to scale down the Earth, since it is part of it. The problem with that? We know how big the Earth is. And astronomers have been able to use radar to measure distances to other planets since 1961. They send a radar signal at another planet, for example Venus, and measure how long it takes for the radar echo to return. With knowing the distance to Venus and other planets, and distances here on Earth, we can calculate the distance to the Sun. All your stupid babbling makes no fucking sense in times of modern technology. And you tell me, is that moon 65,530 times as bright as it is from Earth? Of course not. So, one thing or the other isn't true. Either we've never been to the moon, or the moon is far closer. What can't be true is the moon is the distance that they tell us, and that man has been there. The moon has to be close or we never went to the moon? That's just bullshit jism. Another way that we can determine if the distances we are given are correct is to imagine the sun, I don't know, say it's a thousand miles away. We can determine it with imagining the sun in the sky, what the actual fuck. Imaginating an angular size alone doesn't say shit about actual size or distance. And why wouldn't we be able to see a sun with a diameter of about 1.4 million kilometers over that distance? I have no idea how it comes to such a stupid statement. The thing is, none of what Jaron says proves anything, except that Jism has no evidence against the heliocentric model, then it could also be bigger or smaller. But with the same ratio, which is of course bullshit. Jism will never present anything even close to a model. He made that clear in the debate with Red Rhetoric. He cannot present anything after three years of research and money from its sheep-like followers. Instead to use the chance to bring the flat earth forward in the debate with rats, he missed it and presented nothing. Absolutely nothing. Come on, Jaren. You have at least to present something after all these years. We have enough technology to measure everything accurately, so there is no excuse for flat earths to not have at least a simple map. 
Jason tried it once with the concave Earth documentary, but that, as we know, was also a gigantic fail. But if he doesn't have any model, not even the AE map, how does he want to present any of his claims? Jason, please explain how do you know even the distances between continents? How do you know the distance to the sun without calculating it? You would need math to do that. I know, shocking, huh? But even if there's no complete model of the flat Earth, can we at least point out some aspects of it? Where's, for example, the North Pole? Is it still in the middle? Is Antarctica still the ice ring? I don't know, you have to find that out, flat hearts. See, Wolfie has a new challenge that needs a physical model of the flat Earth. The video to that challenge is in the description. I want to participate, so if there's any flat earther with an idea of a model and how an equatorial mount works on it, explain it to me and I will test that. If there's no other model, I will use one based on the AE map, since this is the only map flat huts use to explain their bullshit. And with that, I'll end today's video. Thanks for watching, bye bye and stay tuned.